everyone, me and Buster Green here, an anime YouTuber currently doing week reviews of the new Kamen Rider anime, Fudo P.I.s. If you missed my review from last week, it was pretty cool, but hey, now it's this week, so I'm doing it again. Also, as it currently stands, I need 86 subscribers to get monetized. Looks like I got a bunch of subscribers this weekend suddenly. Wow, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Anywho, let's get into episode 7, which starts off with a mysterious snowstorm. Oh shit. Alright, spoilers ahead, here we go. Shotaro and Philip are stuck in a bomb cyclone. Okay, good job, anime. That's a very dangerous storyline to not endanger the actors who just do voice work on the show and don't actually want to work in the snow. Anyway, apparently they were out picking mushrooms and they got stuck in a blizzard. The fuck? What are you guys doing? Why Why are you getting mushrooms in a blizzard? Okay, Philip got some mushroom fever? What a crazy, bizarre premise. Okay, cue the opening credits. All right, back at the billiards hall. The billiards hall is also covered in snow, and we see Tokimi's cat in what I think is his first appearance outside the credits and the SD shorts. And Nakiko and Teru are doing arts and crafts or something. Anyway, Akiko is happy that her husband is a motorcycle, and and Tokimi assumes this is a typo, but no, he is literally a motorcycle. Also, wait, now this part's confusing. This is Tokimi's first time meeting Mick the cat, and Akiko seems to know him already. Did they always have this cat and I just never saw it before? I really thought the cat came with Tokimi. Okay, actually Mick has a huge backstory. Okay, I just got confused because they introduced him in like the same episode where like Tokimi joined the gang, but like apparently he was in the live action show, he was the Smilodon Dopant, and now fun fact, in the anime they're drawing him fatter because I guess he's like got an older, I don't know, is the cat still alive? Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, hmm. Maybe his weird connection with Tokimi has something to do with the fact he used to be a dope ant. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, makes an established character. Alright, sorry about that. Anyway, Teru catches everyone up back on the plot that the Meganora dope ant has just been murdered in the asylum. And he's been murdered in a very impossible way, which is confusing. So now Teru is on guard for some paranormal crap about to go down. And yeah, I'm actually surprised we're still getting some continuity with The Last Ark. Very good continuity on this show. Anyway, Akiko hilariously recaps how Shotaro and Philip got into some sitcom shenanigans looking for shiitake mushrooms, hunting for a special mushroom on a mountain in a blizzard, and Akiko suddenly just realizes that they probably might be dead because of that, because uh, no one checked up on them and no one called them on their cell phones. Anyway, the two of them keep wandering through the snow and they find some abandoned summer camp or something, and then a ghost lady snows up. Shotaro screams, oh no, it's the abominable snow woman, but actually she's a cute forest girl, which is very cool, and on top of that, she has warm heated blankets. Now the boys follow her back to a luxurious mansion, which no one saw up till now, and the forest girl drops a couple of very weird plot points. She doesn't own this mansion, she needs permission to let them stay the night, and weirdest of all, they cannot tell anyone in the mansion that they have seen her face. So they go into the mansion and the weirdness continues to percolate as they get deeper inside. And there's actually a lot of people having a party in this mansion and they're all wearing really creepy masks. So I guess this episode is going all in on the common part of Common Rider. Anyway, so first we see a butler, a mysterious grandmother, and a rich man in a golden mask with a harem of hot bitches. Now, almost offensively, the first thing he asks is, what do you think they're doing here? Now. I gotta sit here and I gotta think a sec, what the hell are they doing here? Now my first immediate conclusion is either this is some weird ghost death trap, or this is an eyes wide shut kinky sex cult situation. Which is sure to get an awkward reaction out of Shotaro and Philip, so let's see what they think. <laughs> okay lol, they look at him completely deadpan, and they don't say anything for a moment, they just look at him and think it over. So first, Philip guesses that they're a bunch of eccentric people having a masquerade ball. And Shotaro meanwhile counters that if it is a weird sex thing, why are all the ladies wearing scary Halloween masks? So that's interesting. And Philip is still thinking it might be the kinky sex shit, but Shotaro is now leaning into the ghost death trap conclusion. Which is again, the two conclusions I had, so yeah. Shotaro is mad suspicious of the scary ghost masks, but also counters to Philip that it can't be kinky sex shit because for one, the grandmother is there. So you're not gonna have any weird kinky shit in front of your grandmother. 
And the grandmother also seems to be very important to the room or the party, or at least she's being treated well because she's a little old. So this is turning into a regular puzzle and fuck, I didn't know we needed to bring Professor Lay in here, but here we are. Now, after that, Shotaro thumbing through the possible conclusions for what the fuck this is, comes to a weird conclusion that this is a random recreation of the fairy tale of the fox's wedding. And shit, I don't know that one. But the rich man says Shotaro is right and is heavily amused by this and asks Shotaro who he is. And the boys introduce themselves and lay down on the line that they are private eyes. Now the rich man confirms Shotaro is correct and Shotaro is like, wait, I am? What? And the grandma says that this is actually a process for finding this guy a wife and he's going to marry one of the four women in his harem. Then he takes off the mask and reveals himself as, as Kagamino Kuyo. Okay, so then this gets a lot more complicated. If I'm following the logic here, Kagamino Kuyo is a rich bastard with no friends. And I guess these four masked bitches are all potential fiancés for him. Not sure why they all have monster masks, but I suppose the game here is for him to try and find the one with the best personality and not be wooed over by her looks in her face. Anyway, so he takes off his mask because everyone knows who he is. Oh, and if he dies, this is going to be so cliche. But anyway, so apparently the masks are actually so they can weed out the fiance and he can weed them out on his end without showing his facial expressions. So it's kind of like a poker face kind of thing. So he doesn't want to see the face of the woman he's choosing and he doesn't want her to see his face. So they have to guess what each other's thinking. Anyway, this is a much more complicated and much more interesting version of that crazy slutty reality TV show I don't like. You know the one. I don't even want to mention it. Anyway, Shotaro is suspicious about the intense weirdness and the intense old-fashionedness of this entire setup. And then we start on the backstories. So once upon a time, there was a gold mine here. And then the gold mine, they got all the gold and they turned into a hot spring. But yeah, once there was no more gold, the lack of gold killed the town. However, the Kagamino family, which is the house they're in, this family got most of the gold and they became filthy rich and they were able to stay in the area because they were so goddamn rich. Now apparently the entire family at this point just lives off selling gold antiques at this point and no one works, no one does anything and therefore he has to marry a woman with a good personality because he has so much gold that they don't want to literally attract gold diggers that will dig away the family's gold. So therefore he has to find a good woman to ration the gold and keep the family like afloat. So yeah, he has to find a woman with a good personality who's just not marrying him for his money. It's apparently this age-old family tradition to weed out gold diggers, and it's very interesting, but that's the way they put it, and that's the way I understand it, which actually makes a lot of sense. Now anyway, so then the four candidates briefly make some light introductions while drinking and hinting at their beautiful faces under their masks. We have a cool Japanese girl with red hair, an overly sexy American style girl with blonde hair and gigantic bouncing boobs, a Chinese style girl, and a shy Japanese girl, and Shotaro and Philip then connect the dots that the shy Japanese girl is the one who saved them from the blizzard. Now also apparently all four of these women have been chosen by Kagamino's grandmother, and he's never met any of them before today. Anyway, so then the women have a few drinks, and then they start getting really catchy and bitchy with each other. And the cool girl and the American looking girl start a huge fight. Anyway, the rich guy is just fully amused by this and Shotar and Philip are just sitting there watching and then he says they can join the party and get some dinner. Although this setup is like really, really obviously like leading to a murder. Any second now, someone's gonna get murdered. Now, on top of that, he points out that the mansion is completely snowed in at this point, meaning no one can get in or get out, and therefore we're setting up a locked room mystery. No! Please don't murder someone and then do a locked room mystery. That's like every episode of Detective Conan ever. Like, you're piling cliches on top of cliches at this point. Ugh. So anyway, then the butler gives Shotar and Philip some basic masks, so they can participate in the party. Aurora shows up in the mid-credits bumper. Oh, foreshadowing. Anyway, Shotaro and Philip start eating some delicious winter hot pot sukiyaki. 
And during the small talk, Shotaro mentions that it should be relatively easy to choose the best woman out of these four women because if we're being real, like, they all kind of seem kind of troublesome. But then Philip counters with a very interesting rebuttal. Kagamino is not looking to marry the best woman. He's looking to marry the woman he likes the most. So even though there's obviously problems with all these women, it's reasonable and possible that he might pick the bitchy Japanese chick or the American girl with the big boobs if he's just a boob man. And Shotaro gratefully comments that that would be kind of fucked though. Anyway, so then Philip notices that the mushroom and the sukiyaki are wild mushrooms that they were picking on the mountain. And these mushrooms are apparently great for soup, but they are unfortunately poisonous if consumed raw. Yikes. And oh no, we have a locked room mystery, we have poisoned mushrooms, and they're going to drive straight into a very obvious murder. I'm guessing someone's going to eat a poisonous mushroom and drop dead. Anyway, Philip laughs it off that they risked their lives to get these damn mushrooms and now they're sitting there eating them. They're not that great. Anyway, another person is having dinner with Shotar and Philip, and wouldn't you know it's fucking Mr. Aurora. And he gives Shotar and Philip a different name than the name he gave to the Mega Nora Dopant. So this is either a power play or the dude just like changes his name a lot. Oh, and extra excellent shit. They are doing exactly what I predicted and setting up a new case while also steering directly into an Aurora arc. And further dramatizing the situation, this is another cliche where the heroes have dinner with the bad guys, only the bad guys know who the heroes are and the heroes don't know who the bad guys are. This is just one of those funny situations. Now he gives Shotar and Philip a dog shit story that he's here to buy Kagamino's gold, but logistically he could have snuck into the house to flash mob Shotar and Philip because he easily snuck into the Meganora's house with like no problem in the last episode. So this whole scene is very dramatic and he says that this meeting is fake and the boys just kind of look at him super suspiciously and stare him down and they don't talk to his creepy Colonel Sanders ass one bit. Oh god, this whole episode is getting really predictable now. Okay, here's what I think is going to happen. I bet the bitch with the red hair gets murdered. And it's either going to be this cute innocent girl or this bitchy American girl. But then the Aurora Dopant will be there and like be like a red herring. And it will be super obvious he didn't actually do it. Because he's like trying to take over the world and not murder bitches. But they'll think it's him. And oh, well, anyway, back to the story. Oh god, also he knows Shotar and Philip are Kamen Rider. Wait, wait, wait. Was he legitimately here to buy gold? That's actually hilarious if it's true. Who the fuck buys gold anymore? All right, so Shotaro gets out of bed to use the bathroom and he runs into the shy cute girl again. Her name is Kana Kubakuro and she wants fucking out of this weird crazy monster house. And then when Shotaro asks her what happened, she mentally resets and decides she's actually okay with everything. Then Shotaro hears a huge explosion and runs out naked in the snow. And yes, call it. Red-haired bitch died first. Pinned to a tree, impaled on a branch. She had zero good qualities, but god damn it, she was killed with a fucking tree. And oh, here comes another dopant. This dopant does not seem to be related or affiliated with Aurora's family. He just seems to be actively here, killing the bridal candidates. Anyway, so Philip shows up fully dressed, and then the two of them pension, which unfortunately leaves Philip face down on a snowbank. Um, they should probably really move Philip's body. And oh no, the Dopan is some weird hedonistic masochistic freak that enjoys the feeling of pain and seems to sweat acid or something weird like that. They switch to Heat Joker and burn up a lot of snow, and Philip deduces that this is some kind of alcohol Dopan that the user goes into a perpetual state of being drunk while using. Jesus Christ, how bizarre. Anyway, so they set him on fire since he's made of alcohol, and, you know, alcohol, it's super flammable, so yeah, no, he's just on fire. And he's dancing around like an idiot, and then Philip deduces for his next deduction that this dopant is also immune to pain, and therefore can only feel pain as pleasure, like those fucking hell raisers from that one episode of Rick and Morty. Anyway, the episode runs out of time, so the dopant disappears, but yeah, the mystery is now set. At a Snowden mansion on a mountain, a red-haired bitch was murdered. Someone in that mansion is a dopant that killed her. Now, right off the bat, the real only good candidates for who the dopant could be are this traumatized cute girl, because you wouldn't expect it and you don't know what she's like drunk, or the butler, because in 90% of these stories, of course the butler did it. 
it's probably not Kagamino himself. That would just be really, really weird. There is a low possibility it could be his grandmother, but I would be shocked if it was his grandmother. That would be such a massive screwball, and I'm not sure if Kamen Rider or really any anime can ever justify beating up an old lady who's not like a wicked witch or something. Shotaro and Philip demand to know the identity of the remaining women so they can put a case together. The grandma says it's fine if they know as long as Kagamino doesn't know. So therefore they want Kagamino out of the room, but before he leaves, the Chinese girl asks Kagamino a very interesting question. She asks, would the last girl standing win by default if the monster kills all the other girls? And Kagamino, being a horrible person, pretty much says yes, because he's a freak, and logistically in that situation, he's okay marrying a woman who's a sole survivor, and he's also okay marrying a woman who's crazy enough to kill our competition. Which is a really horrible thing to say, and a really horrible thing to allow, and weirder still, the Chinese girl is like, awesome, and Philip is like, you fucking sick freaks, you're all fucking crazy, and this means that all the fucking women are going to try to kill each other, Hunger Games style, or rather Battle Royale style, because this is Japan. Anyway, so then the episode ends with a dramatic rolldown of all the possible suspects in this case. We have the butler, obviously. Odds of him being the guy, 90% because the butler always does it. Next we have the Aurora Dopan, using the fake name Daisuke Kanamori. His name in the last episode was Bendo, right? I wonder what his real name is. Anyway, also, we find out from this card that he's only 25 years old? Shit, I guess he's not Tokimi's dad. But Evil Twin Brother is still on the table, so I might go for that one. Odds of him being the Dopant? 0%. We already know who he is. He's Aurora. Uh, also, apparently Aurora picked out some of these crazy women, leading to more suspicion that they are the Dopant. So, dead red-haired girl's name was Koyomi Zaizen, literally a geisha. Pretty cute, but mentally unstable, and now she's dead. Next up, we have China Dress Girl. Her name is Kurumi Namba, a hostess with some kind of obvious mental problems. After that is the American-style girl, Kei Arito, a pinup model with some obvious mental problems. And lastly, Kana Kubakura, an office lady, a drug problem with some obvious mental problems. Oh my god, this is the ultimate version of Fuck, Mary Kill. Gah! Alright, I would have done it with a geisha. She had a really cute look. I just like girls with short hair, but of the ones we have left, alright, let's think. I say fuck Kurumi, she looks normal, but her personality is way too crazy. Definitely kill K, she seems to be the most violent one left, and also she seems to have the most plastic surgery done. And probably Mary Kana, who seems to be the most mentally stable, have the highest paying job, and she seems to be the most normal of the three of them. However, Shotaro is also confused about her involvement because she seems to be the least crazy of the three of them. And she also had that minor blink of sanity and, you know, she saved them from the snow. So she's a good hearted person. Now, Shotaro regrets not asking her for more details before more people died. And the ending narration totally cues up that, that probably in the next episode, the rest of them will die. Alright, My Fair Lady is the Underground and then we move on to the post-episode SD happy moment. So in this happy moment after the episode, Mick the Neko talks about how his favorite food is pizza, and then we get a fairly interesting look at to how and why and when Akiko decides to write comedic words on her slap you in the face shoes. Um, I don't really know if we need to see that, but now we know how it happens, because I guess it had to happen somehow. Alright, so that was probably the most absolutely cliched episode of the season. That was pretty much an episode of Detective Conan. And I saw the cliches coming at me like a freight train hitting me in the face over and over again at 100 miles per hour. I'm like basically dizzy after all these cliches. I honestly did guess the redhead would die first because she seemed to have the worst personality. But they all have bad personalities and they would all make horrible wives as far as like wife personality traits are concerned. Like these are definitely Aurora's pick because these are all like bad picks. Even though Kana seems to be the best of the three, she's so traumatized that it makes me wonder either A, does she have some weird, more drastic mental problem from her trauma? Or B, is she just aware of all the dope ants in the mansion and she's either entranced or hypnotized to not care about as much as she really should because she's directly in danger for her life? I hope they don't drag this case out for like three more weeks. The overly cliche nature of the story makes me kind of want to get it over with as fast as possible, but if I'm being real, it's definitely going to take three weeks. 
I could see this case going fully off the rails because of the Aurora Dopant's involvement. I don't think Shotaro and Philip would just drop the case to fight Aurora, but more likely they'll solve the case and then they get some clues to figure out who Aurora is and then they'll go down a branching path after the fact to pursue Aurora and spend the last story arc fighting him and his family. It's interesting though that Tiko, Terui, and Tokimi have been benched for this case. I guess we're just getting a straightforward classic Kamen Rider boys mystery, but yeah, it's ironic that Tokimi isn't here, otherwise uh, she'd probably like point out the fact that Aurora is definitely her brother or whatever. I mean, I guess that's what she'd do. I'm also surprised that we've seen the Dopan right away. I thought they were setting up more of a mystery. Uh, honestly, I didn't even think they were going to pull out the Dopan. I thought they were going to kill someone with the mushrooms, but eh, they'll do that next week. I honestly didn't expect to get a Kamen Rider fight in this episode too, but it was a pretty good one. I guess it's kind of nice to see the detectives enter into a classic detective style scenario though. Anyway, this was not the best episode of Fudo P.I.'s, but I am liking the setup. Like, I'm definitely not liking the setup as much as I did the idol arc that we just finished, but I will say it's off to an interesting start. And the weird morality at play with all these witch people and their like bizarre lack of like sanity is pretty cool. Anyway, that's uh that's my take on the episode. Alright guys, tune in next week where I'll be here watching episode eight. And one or maybe both of these two additional horrible women will be violently murdered by an alcohol monster. And the sole survivor will maybe marry a ridiculously rich goldmonger with no people skills. Or maybe he'll get murdered too. Time will tell. Alright people, this uh, ended up being a long one. Thanks guys. Check you later.